I recently got asked about why I recommend that the water in a bog filter is moved from the bottom to the top rather than from the top to the bottom. It's a valid question and something that I've often pondered myself. So in this video, I wanted to talk about some different examples of both systems and why I ultimately decided that an upflow bog was my preferred choice. G'day, my name is Kev and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. So the first thing I want to say is that both systems work. At the end of the day, all biological filters are simply looking to move water through some kind of material or media that's colonised by beneficial bacteria. I've got lots of videos that talk about the role of bacteria, so I won't go into that too much here. I'll just link a good overview video down in the description. So if you aren't sure how the bacteria keep water clean, clear and healthy, check that out. I think a good place to start is by looking at the downflow system used by natural swim ponds. David Pagan Butler is a great resource for these types of ponds here on YouTube. Then you have the upflow wetland system that is common on all the aquascape pond channels. Again here on YouTube, another great resource. The first major difference is that the bog zone on a natural swim pond is 50 to 100% the area of the swim zone or open water area. David calls it a regeneration zone. Aquascape call theirs a wetland. I call them bog filters. They're all performing the same function of moving water through media colonised by plants and bacteria. So I don't think the name is all that important. Anyway, in an aquascape recreation pond, which is what they call their natural swimming ponds, the wetland filter zone is 15 to 30%. And I would suggest that 30% is more common. So as we can see, the upflow system seems to allow for a smaller footprint in regards to the overall pond size. I also like how I can more easily accommodate the upflow filter into the landscape. I like my ponds with streams and waterfalls and seeing as I would need a pump to do that, it makes sense to have the filter as part of that design. You've seen me incorporate the bog filter into a stream or have it as a pooling area as the headwaters of sorts. It was pointed out to me that the advantage of a downflow system is that it shouldn't need cleaning or flushing as the material cannot penetrate through the media. And this is quite possibly true, but me personally, I was worried that as the media becomes clogged with organic materials, water will simply find the easier route. And I assume that that's why these types of bogs or regeneration zones are sized much larger. Now you could argue that an upflow system can also clog and water will find an alternative route. But I feel like it's a bit different. The water that comes into an upflow system is under pressure. It needs to reach the surface. Plus we should design them with a method to clean and flush them as necessary. On both systems, you can check the flow of water throughout the bog by digging a small hole in the media and seeing how quickly the sediments are cleared away by the flow of the water moving through the system. From some of the experiments I've done on my personal ponds, it seems to me that the flow is more universal throughout the filter on the upflow one. Which to me makes sense. If I fill a glass of water with the faucet in the bottom of the glass, I know that the new water starts at the bottom and rises to the top. If I fill the glass of water from the top, initially the new water starts at the bottom and rises to the top. But once it's full, is this still happening? Is the new water simply taking the path of least resistance and overflowing the cup? I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like it probably is. Now, if the outflow was on the bottom of the cup, I could feel more confident that the water was moving through the filter in its entirety. On my mini bog filters that sit above the pond, I'm quite happy to have the water from the pond flow over the surface of the bog. I have experimented with the flow into the base and the flow over the top, and I noticed no real difference in water quality or clarity. 
Now I've only tried this on my really small ponds and filters. If we look again at the natural pool downflow system, it looks like the water would move through the media in all its entirety. But we are using displaced water, not pressure. Well, I guess there is some pressure created by the water itself. But in my mind, the water that is displaced won't occur evenly. The area that is closest to the bubble pump will have more pull and therefore more water will move through this area of the filter. So if I were pulling X amount of water through the filter, I only need to fill that quota. This is very hard to explain how I'm thinking, uh, so let's look at it a different way. I like to add intake bays to my larger ponds. An intake bay is very much like a downflow bog but it'll help me illustrate what I mean about the flow rate. In this intake bay, I have three pumps, and let's say each one is moving 8,000 litres of water, so 24,000 litres of water all up. But only one of these pumps is going to an upflow bog filter. The bog filter is bigger than the intake bay. The point is that the downflow system can pull in a lot of water. Is it all even? I don't know but the 8,000 litres of water that goes into the upflow bog needs to move up through all the media inside the filter, much like the example with the glass. But in the intake bay, it's just finding the quickest path into the pumps. At least this is how it seems to me. Now, like I said at the start, both systems work. The flow rate through a downflow system is probably just more unpredictable. At least that's my view. But in nature, everything is not universal either. There's times when there's more water flow and there's times when there's less flow. I've always found that I can get consistent results with an upflow bog, so that's been my go-to. But I love experimenting with different methods of filtration. I think it's best to find a style and a method that resonates with you, something that you can understand and then you're highly likely to be successful. I also think that if you've never filtered water before for fish or for swimming, you should start small and build a little bit of a base knowledge. I'm starting to experiment more and more with no pump ponds, and I know that if it doesn't work, I can always add an upflow bog filter and I'll be good as gold. Remember, filtering water doesn't need to cost a lot of money, the processes are natural, and you don't need a lot of the expensive components that pond or aquarium companies will try and sell you. Anyway, if you made it this far, well done. Feel free to check out some of my other videos and website for helpful ways to save money. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya.